Disclaimer, this video is a parody of CinemaSins, link in the description below. So this is not my original video idea. I'm just making this video because CinemaSins hasn't actually covered it yet. Also, just because I'm seeing this movie doesn't mean I didn't actually enjoy it, which I very much did. Enjoy the video! Ladies and gentlemen, Disney and Pixar proudly present Logos. What's that thing creating a reflection in the rain where the Pixar lamp was before? It looks like it could be a lamppost, but when we pan up, there's nothing giving off light to be seen. Do you see it? No. Well, he's done for. He'll be lost forever! All the toys partake in the pronoun game, and nobody tells us which toy is the one in danger. Billy, go! Gruff! This, of course, is a reference to the three Billy Goats Gruff, but how are those names supposed to make sense with sheep? All that just to get Jesse up onto that ledge to unlatch the window? I can probably think of at least five easier ways you guys could have done that, including climbing up the curtain, using Bo's shepherd stick to unlock it, or maybe just have the Barbies jump up there on their own since they seem to be master gymnasts. Also, whatever that thing is that you use as a fulcrum also looks like a toy. I have to ask, what was RC even doing outside when none of the other toys were? Was he just going for his evening stroll when suddenly a storm magically snapped into existence before he had time to make it safely back inside? <laughs> The driver of that car definitely saw that. In fact, there are so many more times in this movie where humans don't notice the blatantly obvious sh** that the toys are doing. So, to save myself the trouble, I'll just add 20 sins now to cover them all. And from then on, Slink was crippled forever, from Andy's mom slamming a window shut down on him. Also, isn't she gonna wonder at all why half a Slinky dog is dangling out of Molly's window? It's time for the next kid. So we're finally getting an explanation as to why Bo Peep was missing in action during Toy Story 3. And that's the f Sin. I can't believe how casually they just glossed over that in the last movie. Yes, Disney did this, we know. There's a noticeable difference between Andy in these flashbacks and Andy in Toy Story 1. I guess nobody ever thinks of writing last names on their toys in this world. How much longer? Keep it to a dull roar, Rex. Deep breath, Jesse. Deep breath. Why are all the toys so stressed about being put in the closet? Don't they know what storage means? And we know that Andy's old toy spent plenty of time in his toy chest. And how is this any different? Wind him if you got him. Keep your batteries clean. Keep your batteries clean. How does one get their batteries dirty? And Buzz is the only toy in the closet with batteries, idiot. Okay, here's the thing that I have with all the Toy Story movies. Somehow, the toys can always sense when a person is coming, because they always either have to have really loud footsteps or say something before they enter the room. What are they gonna do if Bonnie decides to play spy or something and sneaks up on the toys having a conversation? The town is open! Towns don't close. That's the third time you haven't been picked this week. Why would Bonnie not pick Woody and only not pick Woody? She's playing hat shop, and Woody's got a hat. Toys don't go to school. That's that's the rule. What kind of stupid kindergarten doesn't allow toys? Hey, Woody here. Oh, thanks, Jesse. But won't Monty wonder how the badge got off Jesse and back onto Woody? Woody? Can someone tell me how Woody managed to creak open the closet doors to get out, unzip Bonnie's backpack and climb in, all without drawing anyone's attention? Wait a second. I want to know why a kid named Tony has this girly of a backpack. Is Tony a girl's name I've never heard of? Huh, it is. But for making me waste time googling that, you're still getting a sin movie. Looks like Bonnie forgot to bring a lunchbox to school. But don't worry, it'll show up in her cubby. Also, I count nine cubbies for at least 12 kids here. Bonnie, that is so clever. This is fun and all, but weren't they supposed to be making pencil holders? So today, we're going to make pencil holders. Everyone, I want you to meet Forky. You want to know the biggest thing that annoyed me about this movie? He's a spork, so why is his character not named Sporky? It's a rope. Woody is a large toy that Bonnie's dad should have felt under his foot. We'll just be stuck in an RV. He can't get far. I got this. This is essentially the what could possibly go wrong cliche. The voice inside of you. Who do you think it is? Off. This conversation would have made sense back in Toy Story 1, when Buzz was still unaware of being a toy. But after three movies of getting used to the real world, I'm calling bullshit on Buzz not knowing what a conscience is. Every Toy Story movie has to have a tense scene shot from the exterior of a fast-moving vehicle. The moving truck from Toy Story 1, the airplane scene from Toy Story 2, the train chase from Toy Story 3, and now this. Just you wait until Toy Story 5, where the toys hang on to the skids of an airborne helicopter. Oh? Woody sees the same model of lamp that belonged to his Bo Peep and immediately assumes it's hers. Which it is, and the sin is that Bo's lamp just happened to be in this obscure f***ing antique store where Woody finds it. Bonnie's right there. Yeah, yeah, we'll have you back before she wakes up, come on. Why is Woody dragging Forky into this? Alright, so he can get taken by the dummies and Woody will have a reason to come back. Yeah, okay. She's not in here. Woody gives up searching after like 20 seconds of wandering and shouting. Hop on in. We'll take you to her. Oh, well, you don't have to do that. <laughs> well, okay. Let this be a lesson to you, kids. Never get into a white van with strangers. 
Creepy self-playing phonograph is creepy and self-playing. I gotta say, you are in great condition. Toy flirting. My record works just fine. It's the voice box that's broken. Remember back in Toy Story 2 when Wheezy's squeaker was broken? And when that happened, his actual speech started to sound wheezy? Following that logic, shouldn't Gabby be slurring and stuttering right now? <laughs> I see Woody has attended the Prometheus School of Getting Stuck on Things. <laughs> Woody never gets caught thanks to the clumsiness of the dummies. But seriously, is there any reason that these creepy dummies can't move, express, or even talk like every other toy with a face can? The slingshot maneuver is all we've got. Full speed ahead. Buzz has a ridiculously specific pre-recorded message about a slingshot maneuver. Why not just give him one that says, Woody's headed to the antique store to rescue Forky. Let's go. <laughs> What? No, I'm sorry. I thought we established in the first movie that Buzz's plastic wings could not, in fact, serve as real ones. <laughs> Buzz takes no damage from this. The door of the porta potty hits Buzz and knocks him over this way, to the right. But a few moments later, he's sitting right at this guy's feet. Harmony! Honey! Sunscreen! Ah, there's always an excuse for the human to leave the toys for a while so they can do what they gotta do. A real kid would have just brought Woody along with her. Hey, if you think about it, this kid in the green shirt is the reason this whole movie happened, but we barely get to see her face, and we never even get to know her name. She should be more important to the story. I want justice for Cindy. She seems like a Cindy, right? Right, right. Sorry, guys. Girls. Girls, of course! Didn't Woody refer to them as guys just a second ago? Hey, oh, hey, guys! That's an entirely different outfit from what Bo had on nine years ago. So where did she get new clothes? Who would bother giving new clothes to a lamp figurine? We wasted years there just sitting on the shelf collecting dust. Bo says she spent several years in the store sitting and collecting dust. So what made her leave? Did she wake up one day and realize, oh yeah, I'm a toy that can move and I can leave whenever I want. And don't tell me Gabby kept her in the store all that time, because we know that her only motive is to get a new voice box, which Bo Pete doesn't have. But you see, you see, Bonnie needs him just like Molly needed you. But Molly didn't need Bo Peep, and that's why she gave her away. Wait, those dummies are actively sitting atop the shelves and surveying even when the store is open? Why don't Bunny and Ducky appear to be secured anything like all the other prizes in this game? You can see that Bunny is just holding onto the rafters with his hand. Also, why are the two stuffed animals attached to each other? Is that a thing carnivals do? <laughs> Why are you so bad at driving? Any reason you can't just drive yourself? You can't fix broken porcelain with tape. Since you seem to be giving Bo Peep access to all kinds of random stuff, would it have been so hard to give her some glue? Bo's dress also functions as a cape, which is extremely clever. But again, I ask, where would she have gotten such a garment? <laughs> How would they have reached the moving truck parked next to the roof from where they were before? I don't see anything in between that umbrella and the truck on the other side of the road for them to have froggered over to. And how did Buzz reach the roof? You kidding me? We're not going anywhere. What an extremely convenient sharp nail that Jessie found on the ground. What was her plan if she didn't find a sharp object? Also, if you want to keep Bonnie's family here as long as possible, why not go for more than one tire, eh? <laughs> It's Bonnie! She's right! Can we go to the carnival too? Bonnie and her mom were in the store for like 20 seconds. Not even a browse of the shelves. Maybe Bonnie could have met Harmony and they could have played together. Something? Just tell me how to help. You really want to help? Then stay out of my way! If you want to help, stay out of the way, cliche. Granny just locked that door, so how is Benson able to open it from the inside? What the f***? is this secret toy club inside of a pinball machine? Is it supposed to be a safe haven for toys in the store that Gabby and her dummies somehow don't know about? Are the walls soundproof or something so the people on the outside can't hear the party? What if your toy that's too big to fit inside that tiny door? Could it function as a real pinball machine anymore? Doesn't the owner ever wonder where all of her toys disappear to? And what are you all gonna do if this machine ever gets sold? Hi, Tinny! Aw, oh, nice to see you too! Did Bo take a course in speaking Tin Toys dialects? Because he's literally just making accordion noises. Woody pulls his string and hopes something situation appropriate comes out instead of something obscure like somebody poisoned the water hole. Jean was so excited when he got me after Christmas. After Christmas? It was the happiest Boxing Day of my life. Boxing Day is observed annually in Canada on December 26th, five days before Christmas, and Duke just said that Rajon got him after. How much research did Pixar even do for this Canadian stereotype? How'd you get it? How do we get that key? What exactly is the story behind this launcher gizmo that Duke needs to jump for some reason? It looks like he can drive his motorcycle here of his own accord, so does the launcher somehow infuse the bike with more speed than he would get naturally? Over chandeliering. Buzz! The dummies are gone! What? <laughs> Will someone please exp- Ah, oh, f*** it. I know I already added 20 cents to cover it, but holy s***, no one notices this. <laughs> Hey, you know what I just realized? She's got a bow staff. Also, Bo Peep Ex Machina. Oh, 
Bonnie's backpack? Yeah, how did Bonnie manage to lose her backpack in the 20 seconds she spent in the store? And she didn't even come near the cabinet, so how did it end up all the way over here? Why doesn't Forky just get the f*** up during any of this? Conveniently placed board and hole in the window were conveniently placed. Wait, weren't the dummies just pursuing Woody down this hallway a minute ago? And after they escaped, did they decide to reposition themselves behind the curtain for a nice jump scare when Woody came back? Red pencil Woody picks up from the ground was not there in the previous shot. How hard would that have been to put in? I'd give anything to be loved the way you have. Gabby says she would give anything for a chance at one of those moments when she isn't the one doing any giving. Uh, uh your backpack's in the antique store! Let's go! Oh, no! This works. So I guess Gabby and Woody just happened to have the exact same make and model of voice box, despite being completely different toys. Mm. No joke, in the theater when I was watching this with a friend, I predicted this exact thing would happen. But really, Harmony went to pick up Woody earlier and wanted to play with him, but is completely disinterested in a girl doll. Just a question, why did Bonnie even bring a backpack on this trip? There's literally nothing in it. Come on, Gabby. Let's get you to Bonnie. Bo Peep knows that Gabby's a friend now, even though she could not have heard that exchange Gabby and Woody had earlier. Will we make it to the carousel in time? Yes, yes we, we can, Canada. Canada! What? What is it? Somebody refers indirectly to a character, looks right at them, but the character is clueless cliche. Take a right! Right turn ahead! Dang it, of all the toys you could have chosen to imitate the GPS, you picked the annoying Kristen Shawl dinosaur. The Bonnie Hunt doll has a much more natural feminine voice. And how come the real GPS never says anything this entire time? I would have taken all the sins off right here, had they just penguins of Madagascar the RV and overpowered Bonnie's dad. This is the fastest way to the carousel. You made the last jump! <laughs> You made the last jump! Yeah, but that was four feet. This is 40! Duke would be excellent at cinema sins. I'm Gabby Gabby. Will you be my friend? God, how many times have I sinned voice box convenience so far in this movie? Of course, the first line Gabby's voice box decides to play is a reassuring message instead of time for tea or some shit. And then I found this doll. You did? Her name was Gabby Gabby. What this kid should have done is dumped Gabby in the lost and found. So long, cowboy. Happy trails. What happened to you two wanting a kid? I, I don't... <laughs> Mom, you, can you seriously stop cutting those onions? <laughs> okay, if there's one thing I absolutely hate, it's when movies end with a pan up to the sky for no reason and then fade to black. And I thought you were better than that, Pixar. She even made a new friend in class. She's already making friends. No, no, she made a new friend. This exact same thing happened last year, so how was no one expecting this? Also, why do we never get to see Bonnie making any actual friends? People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back! Stop mixed stop is, stop mixed stop is. I know, I know, but my friend might be in there. Friend? What? is friend. How do we reach him? Operation Flash, Splash, and Crash is a go! What are you waiting for? I'm jumping out a window! Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? They're talking about me. They saw everything. <laughs> he knows, she knows, they know. Wow, she's super tall.